Ever wonder how to buy a home in New Jersey? In this video, I'm gonna cover the entire home buying process from start to finish. And watch till the end for a special bonus for my three key strategies that I'm using right now with buyers that help get their offers accepted Woo! without overpaying and without a bidding war. No way! I'm Drew Thompson, a realtor with Coldwell Banker in Westfield, New Jersey, just outside New York City. That is my sidekick, Brutus. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I post videos on here all the time. I post a show called The Real Estate Rundown where I go over what's selling and what's not. I post my Drew Sense and I give you my opinion on New Jersey real estate and I post educational videos like this. Click the subscribe button to be notified anytime I post a new video. Buying a home can be challenging for a first timer. After all, there are so many steps, tasks, and requirements and you may be a little bit anxious about making an expensive mistake. I know I was anxious when we bought our first house. So this video is designed to demystify the process so you can get the most out of your purchase. I'll walk you through the 10 steps to buy a house here in New Jersey laid out very simply just for you. And make sure you watch until the end for a bonus, the three key strategies that I'm successfully using with buyers right now to help get their offer accepted without overpaying or a bidding war. So let's jump in. Here are the 10 steps of the home buying process from start to finish in the state of New Jersey. So step one, establish your home ownership goals. I always ask my clients or suggest that they sit and ask themselves these six questions before they start their journey to buy their first home. Number one, how is your financial health? You should do a personal financial audit where you look at your savings, review your spending, and check your credit health. You need to be ready, not just for the purchase of your home, but for the ongoing expenses that come with home ownership. Like there were so many things that we had to do additionally to this house once we bought it. Additional costs that you have to be ready for. Number two, ask yourself what kind of home or type of home will best suit your needs. Do you want a single family home, a condo, a townhouse, a duplex? Are you going to house hack? Which is an awesome idea that I will do a video on shortly and I'll post it in the comments here if you wanna see it. But each one has their own pros and cons. Next question ask, what specifics do you want in your house? List out the basics that you want, like size, neighborhood, but then also anything specific like a home office or a walkout basement or a Peloton room. The more prepared you are, the better and easier your search will be. When you start your home search, ask yourself these questions. How much home can I actually afford? Before getting pre-approved, look at all the costs that come with home ownership, not just your principal and interest mortgage payment. What are the taxes in the area? What about average utility bills? Do you have to pay for your trash pickup? What about lawn care? Trust me, all of these costs really do add up. Who will help guide you through the process? A good real estate agent's expertise can protect you from any of the pitfalls that you might encounter during the process. They're paid by the sellers and they come at no cost to you, so that's f -f 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 free. And I think you should definitely make sure you have the best agent working for you. Step number two, get pre-approved. Now that you know your budget and what you can actually afford, it's time to start talking to a mortgage professional. I always recommend reaching out to three lenders and seeing which one can give you the best rate, but also see which one you feel like you have a connection with and can lean into when you have questions about the process. It's really helpful. At the end of this step, you'll walk away with a PDF of what you're pre-approved to spend on the house. Keep in mind that every time you go out and look at a new house, if you want to put an offer on that house, you'll have to get an updated pre-approval letter that'll reflect the exact purchase price of that house. Step three, find a home. Now, I think this is the most fun part of the entire process. And I usually start by picking three towns, or I recommend you start by picking three towns that you really like, and then have your realtor start sending you updates as soon as homes come to the market. You can also start looking at Zillow and set up automatic email reminders. You're gonna to wanna to tour homes as soon as possible. And I always recommend to my clients that keep in mind your three must-haves the second you walk inside the door to a house because it's really easy to get distracted. Maybe the paint's not the right color and maybe there's something else that draws your attention away from the things that you have already established are your must-haves. Or you could find that you really like something else in the house. Just keep all of that in mind when you go in and start touring homes. Step four, make an offer. This is the most exciting phase. Wait, I said the last one's the most exciting phase. Well, this is one of the most exciting phases of buying a home. There are a couple components that go into making a purchase offer. We're gonna go over those right now. The purchase price, your down payment, your good faith deposit, closing date, and contingency. Let's go over these a little bit further. 
Your purchase price is the total price that you're paying for your home. In a seller's market, you're going to expect to pay as much as 10% over asking price. I'm seeing even more than that. Your purchase price is broken down into three parts. Your down payment, your good faith deposit, and the amount that you are getting a mortgage or loan from the bank for. If you can buy all cash, completely disregard this section. Your down payment can be as much as you want it to be, but usually it's about 20% down. There are plenty of financing options if you can't put 20% down, so don't let the 20% down myth scare you away. If you're ready to be a homeowner, you can do it without 20% down. Just know, the more you put down on the house, the stronger your offer will be. And in a hyper competitive seller's market, you want to do everything you can to make your offer more attractive. The good faith deposit is usually six to 10% of your purchase price. You're telling the seller that you are serious, qualified, and ready to purchase their home. The money though, it doesn't go directly to the seller. Instead, it's kept in a separate escrow account by your attorney. Next part of an offer is the closing date. Unless you're on a time crunch, I always suggest being as flexible as possible to accommodate the seller's needs. The last part are the contingency. What is a contingency, you might ask? Contingent in any sense means depending on certain circumstances. In real estate, when a house is listed as contingent, it means that the offer has been made and accepted, but before the deal is complete, some additional criteria must be met. For instance, if a seller offers a certain price and you, the buyer, say the price is fine, provided the home inspection comes back clean, you have made a contingent real estate contract. In this case, the sale of the house depends on the inspection not having problems to find in the contract. There are multiple types of contingencies that can come up in a real estate contract, like a mortgage contingency, a home inspection contingency, appraisal contingency, and home sale contingency. Check out the link in this video here that covers all the major contingencies that you need to know before purchasing your first home. Step five, congratulations, your offer has been accepted. Ah! But wait, what happens now? You're not that close to the finish line. You've got some time to go because now you're going to go into something called attorney review. In the state of New Jersey, the attorney review period is usually a three business day period when buyers and sellers have their real estate attorneys review and modify the purchase sale agreement. At the end of the three business days, the real estate contract becomes binding unless an attorney disapproves. The attorney review goes beyond just looking at a contract. Some additional legal advice that might occur includes appraisal contingencies and other rights to cancel contracts. If there are no changes during the attorney review period, then the review period is automatically concluded and the signed contract is binding. Step six, you're under contract. Now that you're under contract on a house, no other offers can be entertained or submitted. The house is marked under contract and you're that much closer to the step of home ownership. So it's important to find out the condition of the house that you want to buy. This is where a home inspection comes in. Home inspections can save you thousands of dollars in future repair costs and uncover problems that aren't apparent to the untrained observer. While they are optional, they are one of the most important parts of buying a home. So what actually is a home inspection? A home inspection is a visual examination of the structural and mechanical systems in a home, including your heating and air conditioning, HVAC systems, plumbing, walls, electrical, ceiling, foundation. The home inspector and a home inspection is going to look at everything in the house and they're gonna tell you where the potential problems could be. A home inspection typically takes several hours to complete and a house doesn't pass or fail a home inspection. It's not an exam. Instead, within a few days, the inspector will give you a report that includes all of his recommendations for repairs and replacements. These reports are extensive, so don't be afraid when you get one. Now, how much do home inspections cost? Usually anywhere from $300 to $500, and you're going to want to pay extra for a tank sweep, which is where the inspector will search for the remnants of an underground oil tank. Look, if you want more information on the process to remove an underground oil tank, check out this video right here. When you receive the report, you'll discuss it with your agent and your lawyer and talk about what you would like to request to have fixed and repaired by the seller. The seller can either fix those issues or provide a credit at closing for the repair. And I get asked this one a lot. Can I back out of buying a house after the home inspection? Yes, you can. If you have a home inspectioncy contingency clause in your purchase contract, you can make the offer contingent upon the results of the home inspection. If serious issues are uncovered, you have the option of walking away from the purchase and retrieving 100% of your escrow good faith deposit, 
or you can negotiate with the seller for repairs. Step number seven, mortgage commitment. So we're under contract now. Everything is going smooth. We're on the way to the closing date and about three weeks before you close, your lender is gonna rerun your credit and make sure you're still employed and that your debt to income ratio has not changed and that you still have sufficient assets to purchase this house. I always tell clients, don't buy anything on the credit cards before you get to your closing. So step eight, we're almost there. Thanks for sticking around. Final walkthrough. The day before your closing or even the day of your closing, you'll meet your real estate agent at your future home and you'll walk through the entire house to make sure it was in the same condition it was when you did the first home inspection. If everything checks out, and it usually does, then you move on to the closing table. If something is broken or not in the same condition, then you have the opportunity to go back to the seller and ask them to either fix it or give you a credit before closing. A lot of times if they fix it, I like to make sure I have my inspector go back and take a look just to make sure that it's fixed correctly and that I'm not gonna have any future problems. Little pro tip there. Step number nine, closing day. The day you get the keys to your house. On closing day, you're gonna meet with your real estate agent, your lawyer, and a rep from the title agency. You'll meet either at the real estate agent's office, the title agency's office, or the lawyer's office. And the good part is most lenders will send you everything the night before to e-sign, but I would still budget out about an hour and a half just to be safe because you're still gonna be signing a lot of regular documents. I would always recommend if you have small children to either take them to a babysitter's house or have a relative like my awesome mother-in-law come and watch them so that you can really focus and be present because it's some really important things you're gonna be signing. You'll also need to bring your driver's license and certified check or money order with the balance of the purchase price. If you're interested in knowing exactly the things that you'd be signing while you're at the closing table, check out this video right here. I did it with a friend of mine who's a great attorney in town, John Sherman. We're gonna go through every document that you have to sign at the closing table. Step 10, you made it to the end of this video and you get to move into your new house. You get the keys to your new house and you get to move in. Thank you. At this point, there's a ton of questions about how to transfer utilities and everything you need to do to get your new home set up. And as you guessed it, I put a video together right here with a checklist that you can use leading up to your closing day to make sure that your moving goes slowly. Okay, as promised, here are the three key strategies that I've used successfully right now with buyers to help get their offers accepted without overpaying or a bidding war. Number one, looking for homes that have been on the market over 15 days that have had at least one open house. If a home doesn't at least have one offer after the open house in this market, there's either something wrong with it or it's overpriced. Your agent will know why. Number two, offer to cover a portion of the repairs for the home inspection. For instance, you could say that you'll cover the first $2,500 in home inspection requests. Talk to your agent. They'll help you structure this in the best way possible to make sure your offer beats the others and is super strong. Number three, cover the appraisal gap. If you're working with a good lender, they can help you structure your financing in a way that you can decrease your down payment and use those funds to cover any possible appraisal gaps. Just talk to your lender about this one or check the link below to talk to one of the lenders that I use for my mortgage here in my house. Thanks for watching. If you're thinking about buying a home this spring, use the link on the screen to get a free copy of my Spring Home Buyer's Guide. It goes over everything you need to know to make sure you get the next house on the best price and on the best terms. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This was a lot of fun to make. I know it was a little bit longer, but the real estate market in New Jersey is still a great time to buy or sell a house. I'm Drew Thompson, and I'll see you next time.